Well, that's an action-packed intro. Kind of reminds me of the intro for Battlefield 2 uh, back when that came out, where all the um, where everything was kind of in-engine there. So today we'll be starting the actual gameplay for um, C. Douglas. Uh, what? Can I rename him? Yeah. There we go. Oh, didn't think that would exit the whole thing. But, uh, so this is basically going to be my character, not the gunner, though. Uh, I don't think I saw... Yeah, the rifleman doesn't have the option, unless it's in primary. Yeah, the rifleman doesn't actually get the option for um, anti-tank weaponry. I know I generally would prefer something like this. Ideally with something a little longer range, but, you know, this will work fine. Uh, so this is my character, going to be at least for the um, for the UN side playing as Navy SEALs. I know that's not probably the, uh, <laughs> the canon choice would probably be Delta Force because of, you know, the whole Delta Force series they did. And then as far as uh, over on the Indonesian side... You can see they got a bunch of uh, different choices there. And their engineer's kind of the same. So uh, Let's switch back to join ops there. Uh, so I won't be doing any of the multiplayer stuff. I'm sure there's still a community going for it, but we're going to be looking at the missions. And as you can see, there's a fair amount. About half of them are training. And my goal is to get through... We'll see how many of these we get through today, because there's a lot of training. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 17 training missions. So I might break this into uh, two parts. And this is more just so I can ease back into things before starting with the actual operations. So first up, we have basic controls and armory. Mission briefing. This mission covers basic player movement and game functionality. If you're new to joint operations or first-person shooters, this is a good place to learn the ropes. Even experienced players might learn a thing or two. Training basic controls armory. Lajika Bataru Village, where you will master player control. Do we get a. Okay, good. Marketplace, practice basic movements in the crowded alleys of the market stalls. Village docks, practice more advanced skills and get your feet a little wet. Excuse me. Main armory, learn more about weapon loadouts and changing classes here. Transport trucks will take you over to the nearby weapon ranges where you can experiment with some of the high power tools you'll be using in joint operations. Default controls, yada yada. All right. Welcome to Logika Baru Village. Okay, do we have subtitles? Uh, apparently not. Um, and I have dialogue maxed out too. Wow. Uh, that's going to be. Interesting, I guess I'll turn down sound effects so we can try to get a little more voice in there. Yeah. Do I have actual objectives? No. At least none that I can see. Oh, here we go. Goals, mission objectives, none. There's a couple of guys in trucks, so... I believe the armory is denoted by this hazard sign, or not hazard, but uh, was it the glory is a key element in multiplayer games. At any point during the battle, use the armory to change your weapon loadout. In multiplayer, you can also use the armory to change your class type. Once inside the armory, press Shift to activate the armory menu. You can change your loadout by clicking on the drop-down menus. Changing your class type in multiplayer will affect the weapons available to you. The amount and type of weaponry you carry will affect the speed at which you can move. The more weight you carry, the slower you move. Your character's weight will decrease as you expend ammo or use weapons, and your speed will increase accordingly. Your total weight is displayed at the bottom of the armory menu. Click Accept or hit Shift again to exit the menu with your new loadout. There are several types of armories, from standalone buildings and trucks to small caches which can be found hidden in buildings. There is a small armory cache in the building where you started. Either of the trucks at the village will take you to our improvised weapons range. 
It's an easy way to practice against static targets with a variety of weapons. Okay, so this is a small armory stash that they're referring to that can be hidden. It's all very Delta Force. I mean, this is basically the Black Hawk Down engine, as far as I'm aware. It looks like Black Hawk Down, that's for sure. <laughs> Behaves like it. We got sights for the AT-4, so happy about that. Uh, we do not have sidearm sights, so yeah, just like uh, Black Hawk Down, really. Uh, so I guess this is kind of freeform, and we'll just do whatever we want. We can go swimming. Whee! Which, nothing new there. Obviously, weapon doesn't fire underwater, so you have to be using... I don't even think they have the special underwater weapons anymore. They did in the early Delta Force games, but, uh... What's over here? Any Easter eggs? No? Okay. Do we... Do I even have a map? Okay, we do have a map. Okay, so... There is one structure way out to the west. I kind of want to hijack a vehicle and uh, <laughs> see if we can actually go and visit, see what's out there. Since obviously they expect us to go to the, um, the armory range. And there are different options too. I didn't spend super... <laughs> their model clip through the ground a little bit, bit there. For the uh, standing or crouched, the Q and E keys will lean your character left or right. This is useful in tactical situations go. for peeking around corners without completely exposing yourself. Whee! So all the same controls. I just gotta get. I gotta get uh, used to using uh, Z, X, and C again. Cause you to jump. Jumping is handy for climbing over low obstacles, like the tire barricade between the market stalls. The C, X, and Z keys allow you to switch your stance between standing, crouched, and prone. In addition to being useful for concealment, your weapon's accuracy is greatly affected by your stance. Press X to crouch and move forward under the boat rack. Crouching improves accuracy and is the best choice for stealth when your loud footsteps could alert the enemy. Pressing Z will put you in the prone position. This is the best position for stability and firing accuracy, but the worst position for quick mobility. You can follow the waypoints to the docks and practice some more advanced moves, or head back to the armory by the start point. You can see the waypoints on the small round overhead view spin map located on the lower right portion of your HUD. The plus and minus keys will zoom the map in and out and the F7 key will cycle through available waypoints. To attach to the highlighted position on a vehicle, press Use, which is normally mapped to the Shift key. You'll see hints and tips appear every once in a while. If you'd like to disable the pop-ups, press Escape and select Options. Uncheck the Keyboard Hints and Game Hints boxes, and you won't get any more pop-ups. The vehicle targets will automatically respawn, so you will have an endless supply of targets on which to practice. Simply exit the mission when you're ready to quit by pressing the escape key. Escape will also allow you to change some of the game options while the training mission is paused. If you want to get a closer look at your targets, press the B key to bring up your binoculars. The binoculars will give you range information on distant targets. The display at the bottom of the binocular view indicates distance to the crosshairs in meters. Okay, so night operations. Pressing N will activate your night vision goggles. The goggles are helpful for dark nights and interiors, but will limit your depth perception and contrast. Pressing control and plus or minus will cycle the image intensity of your goggles. This is indicated by a power meter at the top right of the screen. All right, this first mission was a mistake maybe. Um <clears throat> I did find it interesting that the grenade launcher is basically a direct the automatic grenade launcher that's communicate with your teammates in multi go away but um contextual audio macros f9 will bring up a menu of macros which are transmitted to all players Let's within go. a local area and f10 sends I'm a radio broadcast over the entire map that's to your teammates only your macro options will change depending on your class what vehicle or emplaced weapon you're attached to or what game type you're playing All right, the rocket's pretty direct fire. The tool in your arsenal is the commander's map, which is access.
accessed with a V key. The commander's map allows you to view the entire map. In multiplayer, you can create or join a fire team, issue orders and waypoints to players on your fire team, and mute or punt specific players. Use caution as the game is not paused while in the commander's map. Be sure you have good cover when using it. Pressing V again or clicking the OK button returns you to normal view. To quickly reload, hit Shift twice when standing at the armory. This will resupply your current loadout. Aha, there we go. Uh, yeah, so I guess we'll just follow the waypoint. Um, I just want to see... Go away, pop-up. <laughs> there we go. I just want to see the other structure, really, and that's it. Although I'm wondering if maybe I should have taken a, uh... One of the APCs, since those should be amphibious. Although, it looks like we got across. And we glitched our way through there, so... Yay, us. But yeah, I'm not planning on doing too much in this first one. I'm more interested in some of the other training courses, which probably won't be teaching me anything I couldn't figure out. But but yeah, it's basically, if you recall that video where I kind of showed off the multiplayer for Delta Force Black Hawk Down, it's basically that, but way expanded. A little curiously, we're still Special Forces, even though honestly these operations are definitely more akin to... Um, Something the army or the marines would do, what with, you know, driving tanks, literal tanks and Apaches and whatnot. Alright, was that? Wow, I'm kind of underwhelmed. <laughs> I guess I should applaud them for putting in details like this, but, uh... Alright, Z, X, and C change your gear, so you want to start with a low gear. As you accelerate, move up to a medium. And then... Go to a high gear. So basically, manual transmission rules, kind of, but very simplified with, you know, three gears instead of like six or whatever. So I think we're just going to exit the combat zone there. Training AT4. Practice mission briefing. Practice engaging enemy targets with the AT4 anti tank rocket. The AT4 allows the individual soldier to destroy armored vehicles from a comfortable distance. Accept this mission to experience aiming and firing against an incoming convoy. Alright, press 7 to select it. Yeah, yeah. AT4 fires an 84mm high explosive anti armor round to an effective range of up to 300 meters. A normal target engagement range is about 100 meters. One direct hit will destroy most small vehicles. Larger vehicles or armor will take more hits. AT4s are only accessible to the engineer class. The AT-4 projectile will drop over distance, so be sure to account for elevation when firing at longer ranges. Use the right mouse button to toggle the sight. Yada yada. All right. So. An enemy convoy has been spotted approaching from the west. Press seven to switch to your AT-4 rocket launcher. You have two rockets to use before you'll need to restock at an armory. Try to destroy the lead vehicle and slow the convoy. Armored vehicles take more than one hit to destroy, so aim carefully. Ooh, live fire, huh? All right. Uh, direct hit, haha. <laughs> oh, he's coming this way still. Woo! And we can reload there. Oh, that's a miss. That's a miss. Too much lead. There we go. Alright, uh, let's hit that truck. I think I gotta adjust upwards. Man, infinite rockets is kind of fun. Okay, so what happens is the vehicle's despawn and that's what allows the uh, convoy to kind of move forward all right we gotta okay the jeeps are done now there we go convoy defeated all right so here we have uh yeah again this feels very black hawk down 17 or 20 enemy targets destroyed two of two objectives um, completed and four friendlies lost and zero non-combatants. Training, Stinger. 
practice engaging enemy targets with the FIM 92A Stinger Surface Air Missile. The Stinger is exceptionally effective at destroying enemy aircraft. Here you must defend your base from attacking enemy helicopters. The FIM 92A Stinger is an effective anti aircraft guided missile able to be carried by an individual soldier. One direct hit will destroy most small aircraft. Larger aircraft will require more hits. Stingers cannot lock onto ground vehicles or boats. Also only accessible to the engineers. Excuse me. The Stinger requires a target lock before you can fire. You will hear an audio tone when you have a lock. The Stinger can acquire targets from all angles, but you have a much higher percentage of hitting the target when it is flying away from you. That's because it is a heat-seeking missile, so it has kind of a leg pursuit thing going on. Rebel helicopters have been spotted to the north of your position. We can assume that they mean to assault the supply depot for our armored vehicles just south of the river junction. Arm yourself with a Stinger missile by pressing the 7 key. Engage the enemy aircraft before they can do any serious damage to our supplies. Oh, there's a boat uh, moving somewhere. You must use the scope to lock onto a target. You'll hear an audio tone when your missile has achieved a lock. Fire as soon as you have a lock. Oh. Is that considered a lock? I guess we'll find out. I guess so. Uh, that's the fastest lock I've ever seen in a multiplayer orientated game. Reload at an armory before the rest of the aircraft arrive. Up oh, here they come. All right. There we go. Why did that blow up? <laughs> oh, we got an American, or, well, an allied convoy. Guess it, there's no reason to, ass well, it's probably American, but, because everything here is basically American vehicles. But. There we go. All enemy aircraft have been destroyed. Hey, there's another convoy out there, too. Woo! Mission accomplished. Two of two objectives completed, 12 of 17 enemy targets destroyed, zero friendlies lost, zero non-combatants lost. Alright, now if the rest of these are this quick, then maybe we can get through all these today. Uh, training mortar. Mission briefing. Practice engaging a fixed target with the M224 60mm mortar. Mortars are the best way to suppress or destroy targets when a line of sight weapon is impractical or unavailable. This mission requires eliminating a cluster of enemy defenses threatening our attack helicopters. The M224 60mm mortar is a good way to suppress or destroy enemy targets that are either out of visual range or behind an obstruction. The 60mm round does a little more damage than a hand grenade. The main advantage is the range it gives you. Mortars are most effective when working with a spotter. The spotter will use a target designator to laser target, which will greatly increase the accuracy of the mortar team. Only accessible to engineers. Uh, so you basically deploy this in the field, and you can start... Um... Alright, so... All right, so you basically fire this using a map, then. The rebels have captured an old radio relay station and a bunker at the top of a mountain overlooking a friendly Indonesian base. We have two AH-6 Little Birds en route to destroy the installation, but we've just received reports of anti-aircraft batteries located around the bunker. You'll need to take them out as soon as possible, or they will pose a serious threat to our aircraft. Follow the waypoints and get within mortar range of the bunker. Now that you're within range, find a safe spot and select the mortar by pressing the 7 key. Before firing, you need to deploy the mortar and choose a target on the map. Right-click your mouse to deploy the mortar. You won't be able to move while deployed, so be careful where you choose to set up. Your mouse now controls the targeting reticule on the map. The farther away your target is, the less accurate you will be. Left click your mouse to fire one round. Once you've fired a salvo, you'll need to find an armory to reload. Don't forget to right click to pack up the mortar so you can move again. In multiplayer games, you can work with other players who spot targets for you. They can identify targets for you with a laser designator.
You'll see the markers on the target map, and you will have greater accuracy when firing at the designated target. Oh, are we? Oh, that's why we're... Alright, so let's move up to a more advanced firing position and see how that... Uh... Uh, can I zoom in here a little bit? And you can see that that's a very large area of uncertainty. Well, we blew something up. Okay, I don't like how the uh, map... Like, it kind of uses your map, but it doesn't. It's weird. <laughs> I don't think I'll like having to do mortar stuff. Destroy enemy air defenses on the mountaintop. It would help if, you know, one of my so-called allies would actually designate... To destroy the air defenses. Oh. Our aircraft are down. You'll need to do better than that. Well, that's unfortunate. But I mean, with such a huge, uh, that's such a huge area of uncertainty, though. The rebels have captured an old radio relay station and a bunker at the top of a mountain overlooking a friendly Indonesian base. We have two AH-6 Littlebirds en route to destroy the installation, but we've just received reports of anti-aircraft batteries located around the bunker. You'll need to take them out as soon as possible, or they will pose a serious threat to our aircraft. Follow the waypoints and get within mortar range of the bunker. Now that you're within range, find a safe spot and select Ooh. the mortar by pressing the Hello. I see they had a... So be careful where you choose to set up. Your they had a bit of an ambush plan. you fired a salvo, you'll need to find an armory to reload. Don't forget to right-click to pack up the mortar so you can move again. In multiplayer games, you can work with other players who spot targets for you. They can identify targets for you with a laser designator. You'll see the markers on the target map, and you will have greater accuracy when firing at the designated target. Okay, so there's a minefield there to keep me from, like... <laughs> wow, this is actually a somewhat difficult mission. The Rebels have captured an old radio relay station and a bunker at the top of a mountain overlooking a friendly Indonesian base. We have two AH-6 Littlebirds en route to destroy the installation, but we've just received reports of anti-aircraft batteries located around the bunker. You'll need to take them out as soon as possible, or they will pose a serious threat to our aircraft. Follow the waypoints and get within mortar range of the bunker. Now that you're within range, find a safe spot and select the mortar by pressing the center key. Before firing, you need to deploy the mortar and choose a target from the map. Right with your mouse to deploy the mortar. You won't be able to move while deployed, so be careful where you choose to set up. Your mouse now controls the targeting reticule on the map. The farther away your target is, the less accurate you will be. Left click your mouse to fire one round. So it's kind of salvo, you'll need to This uh is kind of almost uh forget to right click to pack up the mortar so you can move like uh what you may call it. Um, they can identify targets luck base just because of the uh, inaccuracy of the uh, weapon. And you will have greater accuracy when firing at the designated target. It's like, okay, I'll just bombard the area, but I can't actually see really anything. So you're just aiming, hoping you'll hit something. And the map's being wonky. It'd be one thing if, like, for this mission they gave you pinpoint accuracy, but I don't think they do. Uh, shit. Uh. 
Yeah, because I can't... There we go. I guess this map's a little bit better. I, st I can't... I gotta figure out what the controls are for actually... Um... Like, uh, what you may call it? Uh... Scrolling the map. Our little birds are approaching. You only have a few seconds left to destroy the air defenses. I mean, I saturated the area pretty much as much as I could. Am I shooting at the wrong thing? No. Okay. I guess I did I did a good job this time. Except they didn't because they're not destroyed still. I don't know. <laughs> this mission's kind of weird, TBH. Good job. The helicopters destroyed the enemy base. Oh, uh, good for them, I guess. I like how we're using the mortar, like, like we're holding it like it's a weapon. All right. Objectives, one on one. Enemy targets destroyed, 17 to 45. Friendlies lost, eight non-combatants lost here. All right. Training, sniper rifles. Practice shooting and movement techniques essential to successful sniping. Excuse me. Engage enemy targets at various ranges, some nearly a kilometer away. Engagement of individual targets at long range is best accomplished by Cypress. Ballistics need to be taken into consideration when firing at longer ranges. Rounds will drop considerably, and the shooter needs to be careful to get accurate range information and to set the scope accordingly. Shooting stance is also factored into the precision of the shot. Standing will be less accurate than firing from the prone position. After you make a shot, you should move to another location to avoid being detected. Sniper rifles are only accessible to the sniper class. All right, so it gives us our range there. Ba, 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 ba. All right. Visit the nearby armory to select any loadout changes and then move quickly up to the overwatch position. From that vantage point, scan the area to the north for targets. A flight of our Chinook helicopters is en route and we need you to make sure the area is clear of enemy Stinger missile troops or their emplaced weapons. Once you're in place, go prone in an area where you can observe the target while blending in with the surrounding environment. Going prone improves your accuracy and reduces the sway that is noticeable when you scope in. Press the B key to use your binoculars and scan the target area. A good sniper will sweep in a left to right pattern, starting at close range and extending out from his position. While scanning, you should make note of the distance for various landmarks. That way you won't have to keep switching between your scope and binoculars. The rangefinder is located in the bottom center of the binoculars. When you're done scanning, press B to toggle off the binoculars and switch back to your rifle. Right-click to scope in on a target and engage. If you're planning on operating from the same area for any length of time, it's a good idea uh, to protect your position with claymore mines. Ooh. They activate automatically, so just place them a safe distance away from you, facing any approaching paths to your location. If the range of your target doesn't match the available settings exactly on your scope, you'll need to use the hold-off technique. Select the nearest elevation increment by either pressing the apostrophe key or press shift and apostrophe to adjust up and down. Or you can hold the control key and change the elevation with your mouse wheel. Set the elevation to the nearest 100 meters, rounding down. Then use the mill dots on the scope's crosshair and raise the center of the crosshair over the entire target. Practice with this movement to gauge how much elevation is necessary to hit a target in a 50 meter increment. Ooh, that's a lot of artillery. <laughs> I guess I'm supposed to knock that artillery out first, maybe. Uh, we'll restart. Visit the nearby armory to select any loadout changes and then move quickly up to the overwatch position. From that vantage point, scan the area to the north for targets. A flight of our Chinook helicopters is en route and we need you to make sure the area is clear of enemy Stinger missile troops or their emplaced weapons. Once you're in place, go prone in an area where you can observe the target while blending in with the surrounding environment. Going prone improves your accuracy and reduces the sway that is noticeable when you scope in. Press the B key to use your binoculars and scan the target area. 
A good sniper will sweep in a left to right pattern, starting at close range and extending out from his position. While scanning, you should make note of the distance for various landmarks. That way you won't have to keep switching between your scope and binoculars. The rangefinder is located in the bottom center of the binoculars. When you're done scanning, press B to toggle off the binoculars and switch back to your rifle. Right click to scope in on a target and engage. If you're planning on operating from the same area for any length of time, it's a good idea to protect your position with claymore mines. They activate automatically, so just place them a safe distance away from you, facing any approaching paths to your location. If the range of your target doesn't match the available settings exactly on your scope, you'll need to use the hold-off technique. Select the nearest elevation increment by either pressing the apostrophe key or press shift and apostrophe to adjust up and down. Or you can hold the control key and change the elevation with your mouse wheel. Set the elevation to the nearest 100 meters, rounding down. Then, use the mill dots on the scope's crosshairs to manually raise the center of the crosshair over the intended target. Practice with this for a bit to gauge how much elevation is necessary to hit a target at a 50 meter increment. Good work! The major threat to our aircraft has been disabled. You may proceed to the extraction point. I mean, there's still a... <laughs> command has authorized you to stay in the area and engage any targets of opportunity. There is an enemy mortar position on the hill to the north. It's a fairly challenging distance, but you should be able to eliminate them before they zero in on your position. I mean, I already did that because they started uh, a lot uh, sooner than I think maybe they were supposed to. Oh, shit, even further away. All right, what is that? Um, 900 meters? That's probably about the limit we're at of the uh, game's rendering engine at that point. Uh, okay, I gotta go back for reloads. So that's how they were able to send down so much frickin' indirect fire on us. Alright, uh... North. And this is teaching you to use claymores, you dummy. But I've never really liked the claymores. I prefer the personal approach of uh, sidearms. All right. Uh, 900 meters. Oh! And you could see how body armor was affecting this, too. I think some of the targets had body armor. And that's why they would take uh, two hits to uh, to be knocked out, as opposed to one for some of them. All right, let's move. And, of course, because they're AI, they have infinite ammo. All right. All right, who's taking pot shots? Oh, nope, okay. I thought I saw some plan. Yeah, I did that already. There we go. Okay. The mortar crews have been eliminated. Go ahead and proceed to the extraction point. All right, come on. Hello there. Keep moving after every few shots. Move up to the last observation point now. You said the mortar crews were eliminated. Honestly, I think they're just scripted. But it's fine, I can play their game. I still want to make sure that last guy is dead before I move off. But yeah, those more limited ammo, so make every shot count. If you need I to supply your ammunition, try to find a nearby armory without being spotted. 
Ah, it looks like I got about pretty much everyone. All right, so let's... Oh, Sergeant Taylor is still with us. That's a surprise. I thought for sure he had uh, bought it. Oh, is that GPAR extraction? Oh, can't use binoculars while moving. Kind of makes sense. You won't... Uh... You want to, like, you could use them while moving in real life, but you aren't going to have any sort of steady, you know, vision on anything because so you're going to be constantly bobbing up and down and whatnot, so. All right, let's head to this fabled extraction. I suppose this is the armory I'm supposed to uh, scavenge. All right, let's see what's out here. Empty field. Probably perfect for a helicopter pickup. Yep, there we go. There we go. Objectives 2 of 2. Enemy targets destroyed. 38 of 48. No friendlies lost. No non-combatants lost. All right. Training satchel charges. Mission briefing. Use stealth insertion techniques to infiltrate an enemy compound and place explosive charges on a high-value target. When you put some distance between you and the target, set it off. Satchel charges are useful for destroying fixed targets and vehicles. Since you can remotely detonate the charts, they're also useful for booby-trapping enemy positions and vehicles. Once you set a satchel, okay, same controls as in Delta Force. Uh, they also want me to practice with frag grenades and cooking the grenade. All right. Destroy the enemy Puma helicopter in the village before it can depart for the Rebel headquarters. There are enough defenses around the aircraft that you should create a diversion before attempting to infiltrate the village. There's a comm dish by a checkpoint that would make an appealing target. Stay low to reduce the chances of being seen. Take out the gunner when you have a clean shot. Uh oh, he's panicking. One of your fragmentation grenades to take out the target. Press the five key to choose frag grenades. Click the left mouse button to throw. All right. Wee. There's our challenge with a grenade. Sneak up to the bunker and try to get one through the window. There we go. There's our diversion. That should keep the guards busy for a while. Stay down low in the canals and make your way into the village. Only engage the troops if they spot you. You don't want to give away your position. Oh, but it's so fun to kill them. Although, wow, this has, like, zero, uh... Stopping power. I'm supposed to stay in the canals, which are these guys. So we're... If we were true special forces, we'd probably be crawling this entire distance, but... I don't have the patience for that, so... I'm going to try to move the timetable up a bit. What's our secondary? 1911, solid choice. There we go. Oh. <laughs> All right, we'll let the helicopter go because I don't really have a good weapon for engaging the helicopter. Alright, is he going away? Okay, he's just kind of circling now. Ooh, more. Uh, hello. Go away, please. <laughs> I don't need you uh, ruining my cover. There we go. There we go. Sneak up to the helicopter and plant a charge inside the cabin. Be sure to clear the area of any guards first. That's a lot of area to clear. Oh, hello. I 
I see your foot. Oh, there's your head. No, oh, my bullets can't pierce. There we go. All right, let's reload before he comes around. Oh, okay. Oop. Time to go. Now leave the area and detonate the charge when you're ready. Uh. Eight. Then when you left click your mouse, you'll set off. We're done. Alright, and it looks like we have an extraction point. Okay, good, we don't actually have to get there. Alright, 3 of 3 objectives, 17 of 62 enemy targets destroyed, no friendlies lost, no non combatants lost. Alright. How many more until we get into the interesting stuff? Not too many more. Alright, we're, we're almost halfway through. Training Grenade Launcher. Use the M203 Grenade Launcher to even the odds while defending your position. Learn how to use the launcher's elevation adjustments and go on the offensive and take the enemy's bunker. Uh, effective range against point targets is 150 meters and 300 meters against area targets. Only accessible to the riflemen. Will drop significantly over distance. The M203 Grenade Launcher, in combination with the M16 Rifle, is a good tool for eliminating enemy infantry and lightly skinned vehicles. In this mission, you'll need to eliminate bunker defenses while defending your position from attacking enemy troops. Boop. Take out the emplaced weapons around the bunker, but keep an eye out for enemy troops advancing on your position. Switch to the grenade launcher by pressing 3 twice, which will cycle through weapon modes. Right click to switch into a sighted view. When sighted, you can adjust your range by holding control and rolling the mouse wheel. Press 3 to cycle back to rifle mode for engaging close targets. Alright, how many we got? Okay, just a couple more. Uh. Oh. I thought we were supposed to defend ourselves, but. Okay, they got rockets, it sounds like. All right. This is uh, not nearly the uh, game changer that I think they wanted to uh, make it sound like. Get out of here. There we go. Oh, they're just uh, bringing in more and more. I guess this has become a defense mission now. <laughs> I see you shooting. Stop that. Is it? get over there all right let's reload you'll notice that because of the uh, nature of this as a multiplayer game we do not get enemy uh, indicators there we go this is a little more grenade launcher worthy There you are. It's like, I know there's probably like one or two people that survived. Have a grenade. Have another grenade. And you can see uh, rockets throw up a lot of dust and smoke, which makes it very obvious from where they're being fired from. 
Go away. We're done playing. Ooh. I wonder if that's registering hits against an actual person or just a boat. All right. Actually, before we move on, let's reload. There we go. Uh, this is probably a great time for smoke grenades. There we go. We'll lay down a smoke screen for our advance. All right, we got a rough idea of where uh, Mr. Rocket Man is. I just don't want to be the one that gets a rocket in the face, you know? I hate that they give the AI infinite ammo, because obviously he should have been out after two rockets. There we go. Yeah, and he doesn't have, like, an armory or anything. I mean, I assume there's an armory here, but it's not like the AI is actually going to use them. Although, why would they? They have infinite ammo! Ah, uh, we claimed this bunker. Now defend the bunker from any remaining rebels who might have ideas about taking it back. Hi. Go away. There we go. And boop. Boop. Oh, I didn't want to use the ladder. You can't catch me. Okay, I'm honestly... I guess I'll just shoot his hand off until he dies. <laughs> Alright, even though that gunner was still alive, but whatever. Two or two objectives, 44 out of 58 targets destroyed, one friendly loss, so all in all successful. Uh, machine gun. Squad and platoon machine guns bring extra firepower to smaller ground units. Learn how to play suppressive and covering fire with large, fully automatic weaponry. Place your or practice your skills with these weapons and become a force multiplier for your team. Just some general tips on the machine gun. The squad machine gun increases the firepower of the small unit and is capable of accurately delivering a heavy volume of fire. Light machine guns are usually employed against dismounted infantry, emplaced weapons, and light vehicles. The saw is also effective as a close quarters weapon. A yeah, so formidable rebel force is approaching from the south. You must hold the base until a convoy of inbound strikers arrives. The rebels have you greatly outnumbered, so effective use of heavy fire is essential. In the south, all right. Close tabs on your ammo. Machine guns are heavy, so they're best fired from supported positions. Your accuracy will greatly increase if you fire sighted in while the rebels are crouched. Only fire from the standing position as a last resort. Situational awareness means more than just shooting your ammo. This is the jungle. The enemy is going down from just one direction. All right, so they do give us the option for a fully prone firing here. Whee! All right, and we got three rounds left. And behind cover we go. And I'm amazed we can uh, reload while uh, spinning, apparently. There we go. Uh, take out some of that supporting element. Alright, let's get a little further out. Oh. We gotta really get that cluster of enemies before they, uh, fuck up our guys. Although there's so many to choose from. There we go. That's gotta wanna maintain some situational awareness. We don't want the enemy, uh, you know, popping up like, uh, that guy there. And, uh, shooting us at point blank range. 
Whee! There we go. Alright. Man, it's like Wagner's tactics in, uh, in Ukraine. Just full charge ahead, forward, no support. Pass infantry charge. Oh, guy next to me bought it, it sounds like. Booyah! Or, oh, he's just wounded. But they're also... Holy crap. They're apparently uh, just... Coming in everywhere now. Well, hopefully they can uh, hold that front. Nope, they cannot. Yep, retreat to the bunker. There we go. Alright, so we managed to hold our position. 185 of 279 enemies killed for the loss of 8 friendlies. Pretty good exchange ratio there. Javelin, now we're starting to get into the fun toys here. This mission will give you an opportunity to get familiar with the Army's Javelin missile system. Javelin will cripple or destroy any ground vehicle with one shot, but is best employed from a good distance from the target. The Javelin's minimum effective range is 75 meters. It can hit targets up to 2,500 meters away. The warhead is comprised of tandem-shaped charges. One direct hit will destroy most vehicles. An undamaged tank will be critically damaged and the crew will be forced to evacuate. Javelins are only accessible to the engineer class. As you can see, it flies a top attack profile. This is to ensure that it hits the weakest armor of the tank, which is typically on top. So it can cut through, basically maximize the effect of its warhead by cutting through the tank at its weakest point. The javelin flies up and attacks the target from the top with a two-shaped charged warhead that will destroy or disable any ground vehicle. To sight in, select the weapon by pressing the 7 key and right-click to engage the CLU. Place the crosshairs over the desired target. When you have a steady lock tone, you can fire the missile. CLU is a Enemy command launch unit, by the way. Personnel carriers are approaching from the west. Select your javelin and engage them before they can fire on the fuel pump facility. Oh, I only get one, apparently. Use the armory next to you to reload. You can quickly hit shift twice to refresh your current loadout. Do I have to wait for the missile to... I don't, okay. Good job. Both of the APCs are destroyed. Cool. The minimum engagement distance of the javelin is 75 meters. You'll need to engage your targets beyond that range to acquire a lock. Alright, so that's basically about the tree line there. And they're gonna... Training. You can use the armory as long as you like, but you'll have to be more careful in battle. Oh! Pink. All right. Don't forget to duck. These are five millimeter shells are no joke. If the tank is undamaged when the missile hits, it will be disabled and the crew will be forced to bail out. Be sure you have troops nearby to Whee! the mess. Damn, that's a uh, pretty large attack force there. Uh, okay, these guys are hitting a little close. I think I still had a lock on that. Alright, they're coming in now, finally. Whee! Alright. There we go. Looks like we got uh, a wounded private, but, or a killed private. Other than that, we should be pretty golden. Is that all of them? Okay, I do have a ladder. I can get it back up there if I nice work, need to. Enemy armor destroyed. Woohoo! All right, so there we have two, two objectives: sixty of sixty-one enemy targets destroyed for seven friendlies lost. Really, that's more than I thought. That was quick. Okay, so we should be able to finish the rest of these tonight. Land vehicles. See me.
In this mission, you will get the hang of driving with and gunning from ground vehicles. An FAV is standing by. Hop in it to practice ground maneuvers and mounted weapons fire. After you load the FAV into a Chinook, deliver an AAV to a checkpoint at a local village. Nearby, a striker needs your gunning skills in order to fend off an organized enemy assault on a friendly outpost. Alright. Welcome to Camp Clark for some practice with the vehicles you'll be using during your battles. Walk up to the nearby FAV, press the shift key when you see the highlighted control seat. Now drive the FAV into the empty sandbag bay. Good. Hold down the shift key and press the 2 key to switch from the driver's seat to the 50 cal and destroy the barrels in the shooting range. Do not shoot any of your teammates or any civilians. If you do, your training mission will be terminated immediately. Good shooting. Okay. Get back in the driver's seat and drive this FAV past the tower and take a left down the road. Find the Chinook helicopter and load the FAV into it. You can follow the green waypoint on your HUD spin map to find the Chinook. You can control the forward speed of your vehicle by pressing the Z, X, and C keys. The Z key sets the FAV to the slowest speed. X is medium speed, and C is high speed. These controls are useful when you're trying to drive around corners or obstacles. Alright, so there's the Chinook. So we'll just take a... Uh... Oh wow, that is very slow. Alright. Yeah, let's squeeze her in. There we go. Uh, walk over to the left hanger. Well, I left the over here. Is this what they're talking about? I guess so. <laughs> uh, these are not. Are these the things they want? I guess. Why right here? Yeah, AAV amphibious assault vehicle. So, oh, this is actually a fairly expansive base. <laughs> they even got a ramp so you can do sick jumps, bro. But yeah, all I see are everything else is a Humvee or a, or a truck. There is it. That might be a hangar down there. Uh, what is that to my right? I like how the physics is uh, so bouncy. They're not talking here, are they? This isn't really a hangar. So much as... Uh... Yeah, this is just a truck. I think... I honestly think they're, they're referring to this little thing. I think, unless, because they wanted me to drive into the city, right? Yeah. Drive an AAB into the city. Okay. Well, where's the city? I guess we'll just, uh, uh, is that going to be west of here then? Is that the city? Me. Be nice if it had like a skyscraper or something. I like how it's uh, the physics on these trees is basically bumper cars. There we go. We got up over that hill. I guess the thing I was thinking of. Uh, I know why I got confused. When I hear AAV, I think of the AAV seven amphibious assault vehicle, but I didn't see one. Okay, no, this is just our training range that we are already at. Alright. 
Is there an AAV here? There's a striker. Take that instead. There we go. Ba, 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 da. There we go. So we can uh, go to the city now. You'll notice I'm using... You can use the keyboard to uh, steer these. Obviously, it'll still try to use your mouse as well, so it can trip you up. But I, I generally prefer the keyboard for bigger... For, like, wider turns, and then the mouse if, like, I just need the course correct, like, one degree or something. Alright, we'll do one more pass for what I think an AAV is, but I'm not seeing it. It's also interesting the waypoint is still on the helicopter. Excuse me, because I definitely left the, um... Maybe I pulled it in too far? That could be... But yeah, they say the left hangar. So here's the two hangars. Left hangar, I see... They don't mean this, do they? They do mean this. Fuck. Okay. Whatever. Whatever, it's fine. I saw this and I just assumed it was like a cut-down Humvee. <laughs> but this is what they mean. Armored assault vehicle, maybe? I don't know. I've... I, it was last week that I read the manual, so I'm not going to remember it. <laughs> I know that they went over some of the vehicles, but... Whee! Whee! And now I need a new spine! Yay! Alright. Uh, bumper car me through, baby! There we go. Alright, there we go. Weapon inside. The driver is waiting for you. Go now. I found that already. Take out any enemy vehicles along the way. We don't need any more of them reaching the base. All right. That's fine by me. I was kind of hoping we'd have some optics on this camera, but I guess not. You're stuck with uh, what you see. You can't zoom like in or out. Watch out. Control of the roadblock. Alright, well, we can fix that. Alright. We'll knock these guys out. There we go. And that should be all of them. Alright, so hopefully the rest of our drive is smooth, but I guess we shall see. Oh. Damn it. Sounds like I blew one of them up. Okay, they're following me. Although the uh, smoke from the... Uh... Well, that doesn't sound good. The smoke from the 50 cal does not help. Alright. All right, uh, I have to visually identify them first. From the east, he said. There they are. Oh, why are you turning around and showing our weakest armor? Apparently, we have uh, unlimited heat on this, too, so that's nice. Uh, there is no rest of the team. They're all dead. <laughs> Has this been, like, just undergoing bombardment? <clears throat> Excuse me. Has this just been being bombarded from the beginning of the mission? And because I took so long, everyone's dead. <laughs> the, she killed the driver, I think, because I think the driver got out. Stop the Indonesian offensive. Well, it seemed stopped. All the firing is done for. Oh! Woo! Uh... Alright. There you are. 
There we go. <laughs> You'll be a fine team member in the heat of battle. That last guy just waiting to waiting for his chance. All right, so well, we got 39 to 46 targets destroyed, 17 friendlies lost, two, eight of eight objectives. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, what, eight more? Seven more, okay. Water vehicles, in this training mission, familiarize yourself with our forces' seagoing capabilities using Mark V attack boats. Learn to maneuver with and fire from watercraft. If you'd like to practice transporting vehicles across expanses of water, You'll find an elk act and a variety of ground vehicles to practice with. Or if you want, jump into a Zodiac and run the nautical obstacle course. Alright, this seems kind of like a free-form, uh... Free-form mission. Welcome to Rusa Island Naval Station. You're here to gain experience on the boats we'll be using when we encounter the enemy. Try your hand at loading vehicles onto the landing craft air cushion. Elk act for short. You can also take a Zodiac through the obstacle course. When you're ready, join the two Mark V crews at the South Piers. Alright, is this just a dude in the... I guess. <laughs> um, Alright, report for gunnery training, report for combat driving training. So, we can use the Zodiac... Okay, this is number one. Wow, that's a uh, outer ring, huh? That's a pretty big outer ring, all things considered. Is this good enough? <laughs> Probably not. Um, oh, I'm going the wrong way, too. I think they want me to go over here. So that's where all the green icons are. So, yeah, there's, there's the flags. I see them. And that beacon's probably the start. Hey, they got ships out here. Oh, that beacon looks like something I'm supposed to shoot later. Yeah, this will be like, oh, the rebels have, uh, have radio transmitters all over the place. You've got to shoot them. Okay, I did see flags, so let's go back to those. All right, let's test the physics. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, I was kind of hoping I could just jump over that narrow stretch with enough speed to um, get into the inner ring and not have to drive all the way around. But uh, no, you just cannot take a watercraft on land, it seems. So, yeah, this mo looks more obstacle coursey. All right. We we it's so difficult. We we I did it. All right. Well, they didn't give me any more instructions. You can even uh, pilot these boats, I think. There we go. A bit slower, though. <laughs> These barrels are going to upend my, uh, my D hour, whatever this is. <laughs> yeah, the physics there. That wasn't me stopping. That was just the boat doing funky stuff, so. Yeah, the physics are definitely kind of wonk. Yeah, you can see there. That, I think, is just because the water is not deep enough. And then it just sees land, so it's pushing off against that. All right. Hey, the Zodiac. Or, no, that's a different Zodiac. But, uh... Yeah. I think they also just don't want you to 
you know, put vehicles in a situation where they're not usable. Take any of the nearby land vehicles and practice parking them on the LCAC. Oh man, this is going to be so hard. I don't know if I can do it. Uh... All right, we did it. Feel free to continue practicing or move on to the other exercises. There we go. So you can see it looks like they're fitted for about four truck-sized vehicles on the LCAC. All right, so we're just go we're just going to swim out to the uh, these Mark Fives and uh, and just do the whatever mission they have set up. All right, what do you have for me, Mark Five of the left? Pilot this Mark Five out into the open water to the south and locate the enemy patrol boats. Avoid getting hit and position your crew so they can fire on the moving targets. You can control right. the forward speed of your boat by pressing the Z, X, and C keys. The Z key sets the boat to the slowest speed. X is medium speed and C is high speed. These controls are useful when you're trying to steady the boat for your teammates to shoot the enemy and shoot the ship combat. Be aware of your opponent's weaponry and the rotational limits of those weapons. Try to engage the enemy from angles where his offensive power is least capable. So basically, cross their T. You got, like, this broadside naval combat, which is uh, amusing, to say the least. All right, there's one. You gonna make me do another one? Oh, yep. There they are. All right, have at them, boys. All right, they should be just about done, I hope. All right, so then we just have to take the other patrol boat, I think. Park between the two concrete docks. All right. Unless the, uh, yeah, because I still have to do gunnery training. So basically take the boat back to where you found is what they're saying. But uh, I'm not going to worry about uh, getting a perfect park job there. Obviously, I should have backed in, but don't care. We Look at me not caring. All right. Uh, well, maybe I should have cared because now it's going to be slightly... Okay, there we go. So now this one, I should be on the guns. Yeah, it looks like I'll be manning the right side. That one. I like that map, that like digital LCD map they have in the cabin. There. That's pretty cool. All right. I was gonna say one of those should have hit. I suppose I better not kill civilians. No war crimes here today. Hey, pilot, can we pick up the pace? That surprise is often your most effective weapon. When you're shooting at real enemy units instead of targets, you should hold your fire until you're in range to strike. This way, you won't warn the enemy by activating the threat indicator on their HUD. Alright. I'd rather shoot from maximum range, though. Just, like, if you can do it accurately, then they won't, they'll never know you were there. They'll just, uh,. Okay, I guess a little war crime. as a treat. <laughs> when I hit the goals, even the pilot stops, even though I'm not driving the vehicle. That's a funny little glitch. There we go. Uh, this is a pretty close one. Good shooting. 
All right. Oh, it doesn't count as completed, though, even though I did them all. We will just pull up more ships then. How's it going there, soldier? Doing good? Good to hear. Oh, now he's turning around. Wow, they really do not have a lot of faith in your ability to hit those targets if they go that far out and then turn around. Looks like you've got hostiles. Oh. Sink that enemy patrol boat. And they should be about done for. Uh, wow, these things are durable. I will say that. There we go. That wasn't too bad. I was looking there, Sergeant. Need a hand? No? Okay. Oh, I have an 84 too. Damn. Uh. Uh. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, they, uh, the AT4s were uh, less effective than I thought they would be. Alright. That's what I get for trying to have fun. Okay, now are we done? Oh, look, they even have uh, barrel glowing effects for when, oh, does it not cool off when no one's using it? No, I think it's cooling off. Okay. That would have been crazy if, like, you could use a weapon up so it's overheated and then, uh, basically leave it, uh, overheated for, like, the next guy to use it. <laughs> that would have been something. Alright, so all our objectives are completed. He should be pulling us in now. So we shouldn't have anything else to do. Interesting how the grenade launcher doesn't have really have a s adjustable sight like the um, the rifle mounted grenade launcher does. Like you look at, oh, I guess, yeah. uh, we, that's because we have the scope, so they don't have the leaf sight. But uh, but like the regular M16 where they have the leaf sight. Yay! Keep this training in mind when you're out on the water. I will. There we go. All right, seven of seven objectives, 20, 25 targets destroyed, no friendlies lost, hooray. Now we have aircraft. This is where you will practice the basics of flying a helicopter in a combat environment. A UH-60 Blackhawk is standing by to help you learn how to fire the minigun from the air. A H-6 Little Bird attack helicopters are at your disposal for combat runs against increasingly difficult enemy targets. So after this, we will have five missions left. All right. Basic stuff about search and rescue. I feel like CSAR really isn't a thing in these types of games, but they are in real life. They were in Black Hawk Down. Army Airfield. Our teams need experienced helicopter pilots. Practice on the Black Hawks and Little Birds that we have here. Be careful. You can be shot down during this training mission. When approaching the aircraft, use your mouse to see the attach points and highlight one of them. This Blackhawk will fly you through an aerial gunnery course. Hop on and man a minigun. To attach to the highlighted position on the aircraft, press Use, normally mapped to the Shift key. To switch positions while attached to a vehicle, hold down the Shift key and press the number key that corresponds to the new position. Refer to the vehicle icon on the bottom left of your HUD. If another player occupies a position, you cannot switch to that position. All right, so there we go. We're about at the Black Hawk target range. Let it rip. Get some practice with the minigun by destroying those barrels. Ooh, the minigun does heat up, but very, very slowly. Which is actually a realistic, you know, how this is supposed to go. That's why it has six barrels. I. That's one of my pet pieces, games where 
they give you a minigun, but it overheats in like five shots. And it's like, no, that's not how miniguns work. Safety your weapon and head back to the port. All right. Weapon safe. Pew. I did it. Yay. Destroy 75% of guarding targets. Fly Blackhawk and lo locate down air crew. Hey, how's it going? That's a lot of buttons. Oh, I can hit my head against the uh, control panel there. That's kind of funny. Uh... Oh, look, he can fly with no hands, just using the rudder pedals. All right, we're just about back at base, so I assume we'll take that other helicopter. One of the other Blackhawks. No, it's just one Blackhawk. We have a Blackhawk, Chinook, and two little birds, it looks like. But we'll take that one on the search and rescue and take one of those on the uh, interdiction mission, I presume. Oh, no, there is a second Blackhawk hidden in the back here. All right. That one has... Oh, that one's uh, a prop, I think, because it's on, like, those, those safety pads. And it's got all the... Uh, the, you know, the tags on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. This Blackhawk to practice picking up a crew in hostile territory. As you approach the landing zone, you'll need to avoid enemy gunfire and land quickly. Wait for all the men to board and then return them to the base. On the way back, position the bird to protect the crew from getting shot. When you attach to the pilot seat of any aircraft, you automatically start the aircraft's engines. The turbines will reach flight idle after approximately 15 seconds. If you detach from the pilot position, the engines and rotors will begin to spin down. The aircraft is now at flight idle. You may take off by pressing the collective up control, normally mapped to the E key. You should take a look around your base to see if any of your teammates need a lift. Having extra crew on board will give you a lot more firepower as well. Use the audio macros on the F-10 key to see if any teammates Whoops. need transportation. Oh, wow. The default W, A, S, and D keys affect your helicopter's cyclic control. Use them to fly forward, W key. Strafe left, A key. Strafe right, D key. And fly backwards, S key. When you stop pressing these keys, the helicopter will hover. Move your mouse sideways to control your tail rotor while hovering. Here they are. Uh, guys, just get in. Okay, so we just have uh, gun pots in this. Oh, we have limited ammo. That's interesting. Destroy the camouflaged ground targets. They're firing live rounds. The aircraft is now at flight idle. You may take off by pressing the collective up control, normally mapped to the E key. Get in the habit of checking your surroundings before. 
Alright. It's gonna be interesting aiming this, because there's no aiming reticule really. I, I don't I I have an arrow, not an I beam. All right, target alpha. Up, oh, I guess that's these guys. Wee. Yeah, I, uh, it'd be nice if I had a real crosshair, but oh. Yay, I did something. Hold on, first target destroyed. Proceed to the next objective. And we'll never know why. Alright, 600 meters. Woo! Alright, uh... Okay, I assume that's what we gotta hit next. There we go. We have uh, medium damage now. Ah! No! Hold up! Hold up! Whee! Alright, let's, uh... Let's see what we can do here. Oh. There we go. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Well, at least they're kind enough to give me a respawn. Forward speed by pressing the Z, X, and C keys. The Z key sets the helicopter to the slowest speed. X is medium speed, and C is high speed. See, up. controls are useful when you're coming in for a landing, flying low over the horizon, or when you're trying to steady the aircraft for your teammates to shoot the enemy. Hop in the AH-6 Little Bird attack helicopter and follow the waypoint path to the objective. Why did it? Why did Why did it give me uh, an external view then that last time? I'm confused. Because this is exactly what I wanted. This is all I wanted. Alright. You know, roughly where that helicopter was. Alright, so now we must dogfight for aerial supremacy. Alright, they're all riled up as expected. Uh There we go. Okay, there's the helicopter. All right. Wee! All right, bring her around. Bring her around. I suppose this is where, like, the speed thing can be useful. Otherwise, you gotta kind of adjust to, uh... Keep the target in your sights. There we go. We've won. He's on fire. There we go. Oh, they want us to destroy... Where is... Oh, way up there. All right. We'll head way to the north, then. Destroy parked aircraft at Charlie. What I'll probably end up doing is just parking myself and uh, shooting him from the ground so I have a, a good uh, 
uh, whatchamacallit, um, you know, a solid lock on them, solid target. This is where having some rocket pods would be nice, too, so I could actually just do this in one pass and be done and not have to mess around. All right. There they are. Well, that was easier than expected. Your ability to fly helicopters will be a valuable skill for your team. Woo! All right. Eight of eight objectives, 14 and 66 enemies destroyed, and apparently my death doesn't count towards losses. All right. So now we have base defense. An incoming enemy force provides a good opportunity for you to get some battle experience before you attempt any offensive. In order to succeed, you'll need to exhibit proficiency with a variety of weaponry and a high degree of battlefield awareness. Honestly, these feet. Uh, da, 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 da. I wonder if, like, the original game was up to here and then the expansion introduced, like, the motorcycle and tank. Because otherwise, base defense and base assault kind of sound like a finale to me, but. Defending your base may not be the most glamorous assignment, but it is one of the most important. In advanced and secure games, you'll need to keep enough teammates in reserve to defend your forward positions. If the enemy gets enough troops into the zone around your control point, you'll lose the ability to spawn troops and vehicles at that position. Uh, okay. Alpha. <laughs> in this training mission, you must defend the base position yeah, it's and go enough. across roads from a well-armed enemy force. Take up a defensive position before the approaching enemy arrives. You can use any emplaced weapons, or choose a loadout from the armory. Watch all four gates, and do not let the enemy gain control of the base. Good luck. Where are emplaced weapons? I didn't see any. Oh, they're... okay. Well, we know where they're coming from now. Alright. I'm looking at... All right, I'm coming as fast as I reasonably can. I don't know why you would leave the safety of the base, but that's just me. There we go. They're in the woods. There sure are a lot of them. All right, come on. Hello there. I see you have chosen death. All right. And... There we go. Just a handful left. Uh, whoa, hello there. I saw you. You can't hide from me that easily. Alright. Uh, ba ba ba. There we go. Alright, I know there's one more guy coming from that direction, probably. Oh, damn it, I just saw him. There he is, he's in the... He's in the brush. There we go. Unfortunate that our gunner is gone because he was putting a lot of firepower down range, but it is nice not to have that in my ear anymore.
All right. We need support in the south gate. Enemy infantry spotted. All right. How much, uh... Oh, why am I left-handed all of a sudden? That's unfortunate. Oh. Give me my HUD back. There we go. I'm coming. All right, I gotta... <laughs> I gotta see why I'm... What the button is for that, because I completely forget. Um... Let's see. Manner, free look. F2, F3. Do I just cycle through F3? Oh, okay. Oh, it's fixed for some reason. Okay, grenade launcher would have been... Uh... Alright, I need ammo. Uh, grenade! Whee! There we go. That should, uh... Wow, we eliminated so many enemies over there, and you still can't hold that? Damn, bro. You suck. Granted, the game does seem to just keep spawning them. Uh... There we go. They're inside the base! And then we got these four truckle clocks who are just sitting there not doing anything. I wonder if rearming and an armory also heals you. Alright. Nope. Woo! Damn it, I hate reload locking. You get, it, just like in Delta Force, you do get locked into uh, reloads here. Alright, these guys just suck at shooting, apparently. Alright. I'm left handed again, apparently. I swear to God, if I get team killed by you guys. Alright. This is why we have the AT4. Okay, they're still coming. At the very least, pick off the uh, machine gunners there. grenades have grenades all right oh ah uh, there's too many of them okay it does not heal you all right And there's that promised helicopter. Hello, Rocket Launcher Man, go away. You are the bane of my existence. <laughs> Ooh, they all hate it. All right, now we just gotta knock out that helicopter. Direct hit. I think I got it. Yep. All right. Oh, man, that's a lot of them. Get 
get out of here. All right. Really? Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> All right, instant respawn. All right. All right, rearm. We got more vehicles to deal with. What? I hit you. Go away. <laughs> Damn. Alright. Be nice if our allies could respawn too. Instead, it's just gonna be me cleaning up this mess. Oh, and what a mess it is. There we go. All right, someone's down here. All right, that was painful. <laughs> uh, three of three objectives accomplished. 330 enemies killed for 37 friendlies lost. I did not see 37 friendlies on that map. Maybe they were respawning. I just didn't notice. But, um, yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> All right, base assault. Reconnaissance has discovered a remote rebel outpost just outside our training facilities. The recent attacks on our forces must have been staged from this base. You've been authorized to take control of the area. Sit, land, sea, and air vehicles are all at your disposal. You'll need them. Excuse me. The rebels are firmly entrenched. They're not going out without a fight. All right. So just standard base assault stuff from any sort of massive multiplayer game. All right. We'll start at Alpha. We'll just use the default loadout. Are those rocket pods? Oh, yeah, baby. We don't have many of them. Uh. See, now it's. It's forcing me in the first, uh, third person view again, so I can't aim them. <laughs> what the hell? Like, even using the, um, first third person toggle doesn't do anything. Yeah. Oh, well. That's weird. I guess that's just going to incentivize me not to use helicopters. <laughs> and here we go. Combined assault by sea and air. We'll probably hit a few key targets and then... Uh... Wow. With those... Wee! All right. Uh, I've played a game in my time. There we go. Mission accomplished. Oh wait, I did it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That, uh, <laughs> that was uh, night and day from the last one, wasn't it? All right, objectives one, enemy targets 1185, 12, for, how, 12 of them died? The mission was barely going on for like a minute or two. Jesus. All right, two left, two left. And then we'll have this all out of the way, and we can start doing the real missions. Training M1A1 tank. Learn to operate the weapon systems of the Army's M1A1 Abrams main battle tank. Play the mission as either the commander or the gunner. The M1A1 Abrams main battle tank is the Army's heavy hitter on the battlefield. Armed with a 120mm cannon and the M829A2 Sable round, the Abrams packs a lethal punch to enemy ground units. The 1500 horsepower gas turbine engine moves the 63 ton tank at up to 45 miles per hour across open terrain. 
There are positions for a driver, gunner, and commander. The commander operates the mounted 50 caliber machine gun and can also designate targets for the main gunner. The Abrams is impervious to most small arms fire and will take several hits from RPGs to do serious damage. However, even with no previous damage, one javelin missile will critically damage the tank and force you to abandon the vehicle. Gameplay mechanics. All right. Anyways. Uh, familiarize you with the weapon systems of the M1A1 Abrams main battle tank. Attached to either the 120 millimeter gun or the 50 cal machine gun position. All right. The armor on the M1 Abrams can absorb considerable damage. They'll take a lot of RPGs to ruin your day. But keep a sharp eye out for the enemies with javelin anti-tank missiles. Just one hit can force you to abandon your tank. All right, you can see we are moving. You can designate targets for your gunner and multiplayer. When the commander points the 50 cal at an enemy and presses the space bar, the gunner will be alerted to the selected target. The commander must keep the target in view until the gunner has it in sight. Fire the 50 cal machine gun in bursts. The weapon will overheat if fired constantly. When overheated, the gun will seize until it is cooled down. The gunner has control of the 120 millimeter cannon and views targets through a variable 10 times zoom gun sight. The magnification can be adjusted by rolling the mouse wheel up and down. To change elevation, hold control while rolling the mouse wheel. After firing the main gun, you'll need to wait several seconds to reload. The gunner will be able to see where the commander is looking by following the pit. If the commander is looking in a different direction, the pit will turn yellow and the line indicating the direction to turn will be red. So, that pip is basically where our little AI gunner is uh, looking at. Alright, are you going to make us get out? No, okay. We are moving onwards. Oh, no third person view option here either. Which, I mean, this is a bit more fair. Okay, those are Apaches. I was thinking enemy helicopters. And it's like, oh boy, time to uh, refresh my Battlefield 3 skills there. Alright. Oh, that's right, I do have a zoom. Very nice. I always love the ability to zoom. There we go. All right, you guys apparently can't do your job. I should have been on the 50, not the gunner. But I wanted to blow up tanks. That's kind of what I thought we'd be doing here. It is very interesting to see AI aiming, though, from uh, this perspective. You don't normally get to see how, like, how an AI actually aims. And here you can see they're just... There is a swing to them, but they... Basically, instantly lock on. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Interesting how my... F oh, that... Is that showing where the barrel is relative to where I'm looking? No, it's showing where I'm looking relative to the barrel. Right. They will all fire. Man, that is a long reload time. What? All right, enemy tanks. There we go. This is what we're waiting for. All right. Uh, night vision is useless. All right. We need thermals, really, but... There we go. Kinda have to trust our AI teammate for this one. Since the AI can see through smoke, and I can't. There we go. Uh, 
Got him. Alright, this is all on you, AI teammate. Oh, I suppose if any RPGs I could prioritize them, but otherwise it's uh pretty much a machine gun fest up. Whoa! Machine gun fest up. Oh, there is an enemy left, maybe. Oh. Alright, who's attacking us from the rear? Die! There we go. He's been annoying me this whole time. Alright, not seeing anything else, really. I guess they think someone's over there. Destroy enemy armor. Is there actually, like, a vehicle on my map? No, there are two enemy helicopters. Oh, I cannot leave. I'm not allowed to leave. Interesting. Huh. Well, I hope it's not glitched out. Because then otherwise I guess we're just going to end it here. But, uh, I'm not seeing enemy movement. I see two hostile helicopters. I see a armory. I do see more vehicles to the north and the southeast. But, uh, yeah, no one's doing anything. I can't leave. There's a UN base there. Uh, I can't even switch position in the tank. They got you uh, pretty restricted for this, so I guess we're just gonna end it here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about getting every debriefing. Um, there we go. Training MC. Oh, you know what? I forgot the motorcycle training. <laughs> Take part in a high-speed reconnaissance mission on one of the army's new dirt bikes. Learn how to drive and shoot while infiltrating deep in enemy territory. The M1030 is a high-speed, agile dirt bike employed by the military for special operations and reconnaissance missions. It can swiftly carry two soldiers into battle across even highly challenging terrain. Its obvious advantages come at the cost of a loud engine noise and a telltale dust trail. Power slide, hit E while turning. Useful for navigating a tight corner or evading an unexpected palm tree. You can also perform wheelies by pressing the Q key. A skilled soldier can use this maneuver to protect their face from oncoming enemy fire. Driving F4 will do third person. All right. And the motorcyclists and passengers can shoot. Another addition to the Indonesian theaters, the M1030 motorcycle. will throw you into the action with a quick recon mission inside enemy held territory. Hop on the back of the bike in front of you. Oh, God. I hate these things. Enemy patrols. It just completely drowns out any, uh... Any other noise the game is making. Huh, okay. I didn't know you could lean on a motorcycle. There we go. I really hope this mission doesn't last too much longer. It annoys the hell out of me. Oh, I do have grenade launchers, okay. Thought I did. Might use that to stir up some trouble on our next pass. Alright. I see you. Woo! More than one guy. Alright. 
Hey there, how's it going? Driver's down. Take control of the motorcycle and follow the lead bike to the exfil point. We'll come back for him later. <laughs> they give you health here. I think just in case you got hurt. Oh no, he's down. Oh, okay. I'm gone. Whee! Alright. Well, I guess now I have my waypoint. Oh, I can't. It's, see, it's not letting me go into first person view again. They say you can change it, but you can't. They lie. Whoop. Bumper cars. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother. We get the point. Alright. The MC5 is a steerable static line or freefall parachute. A Chinook is standing by to take you up for a couple drops to let you get familiar with the stealthy infiltration method. This is what I'm really interested in, because I don't know what their parachute controls are gonna be. The MC5 is a steerable parachute which is capable of either static line or freefall deployment. The canopy is a ram air type constructed of seven cells. Parachute will automatically deploy when you jump out of an aircraft. Okay. The parachute can be controlled in flight by using your normal movement keys. While descending, you have the ability to fire your weapon, but your accuracy will be significantly impacted. You only carry one shoot at a time, so re-equip a parachute at an armory before you jump again. The small icon in the bottom left of your HUD indicates that your parachute is ready for deployment. Check to make sure you're equipped with a parachute. You should see an icon on the bottom left of the HUD showing that you have one with you. Board the Chinook in front of you and we'll take you up for a few practice jumps. Alright, so this isn't Battlefield where everyone has a parachute at all times. And in fact, even in later games, I think you could unopen your chute so you could like drop down real fast and then open it again. Although, maybe I'm just thinking of Just Cause or Call of Duty. Just Cause in particular was infamous, I know, for infinite parachutes. Like, you could open up a parachute while in a vehicle to pull you out, you know, or like, you know, jumping on a plane or, or whatever, cut it, so you could dive in really fast, you know, maybe you, someone was shooting at you and you wanted to break line of sight or something with a mountain range or something between you, and then open it again, like, right before you hit the ground, so that way you don't hurt yourself coming down. All right, I can't get up there. That's fine. How far away are we dropping? Uh, not too far, I guess. With all the little flathead sperms that they have on the map. <laughs> That's what they look like. Like little tapeworms or something. I guess these are supposed to be our drop points. Alright. My patience is kind of wearing thin since I'm doing all these in uh, in one go, so I'm probably only going to do a single jump. Uh, unless they make it really quick to do more. But, given how long just this flight out is, I'm guessing that's not the case. I guess that's a hover. Whee! Okay, you just immediately Get deploy it, yeah. Jump off the ramp and your chute will deploy. Oh, it's such a long drop, too. Oh, you can't scope in. Steer the chute with the WASD keys. You can also shoot if necessary, but your accuracy will be reduced. Steer for the drop zone below you. All right, so we're going to try to hit in the middle of that pad. This is giving me flashbacks, actually, to America's Army of all things. Man, that was a that was a game. It still is a game, I guess. But uh, 
I grew up with the, what was it, the 2.6 or 2.8 Special Forces version. Actually, I have the, I think I have an installed disc for it around here somewhere. Don't know if I could still get that working. That would be fun. You know, not, like, obviously I'm not going to play with that online anymore with how old it is. But to go through, like, all the training courses would be kind of fun again. All right. Oh, yeah, they have all these trucks here. So they expect you to go back to base on the truck, take the Chinook up again, and, like, hit, you know, hit a target. Before the Chinook comes back around, pick up a new chute in the armory. Yeah, so where do you equip a chute? Does everyone get them and we just haven't been getting them? Is it, like, server-defined? Oh, okay, so it counts as an accessory. All right, so that is an accessory slot. Okay, so the Chinook will just pick us up directly. I can probably tolerate that. Verify you have a parachute icon or the Chinook. This time right. you'll have to jump all on the move, and you'll have to make it fast when the word is given. Easy enough. I don't see how it's really gonna be any different other than uh you know, don't hit the helicopter on your way out. Righty, righty, righty. Approaching the drop zone. Stand in the door. All right. Waiting for the order. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Go, go, go. Whee. All right. I don't think they dropped us from as high this time. It feels like we're already closer to the ground. And down we are. Yep, there you go. You can shoot from a parachute. There are Blackhawks en route to pick you up for your final qualifying jump. Grab another shoot from the Ah, <sighs> all right. If it's the final jump, then fine. <laughs> all right. We I guess we'll just sit. Objective has been added. All right, now this is more like it. Jump on the roof, knock out enemy soldiers. All right, how far away is this mythical building? Down south. Okay, I see it. That's probably the building with the uh, vehicle next to it. Yep. I knew there was one left. All right. Oh, damn it. I didn't see you. Shit. Man, he got me good. All right. Uh. No, no. Is it four? It's four. No! All right. Let's try this again. There we go.
There we go. All right, first room clear. Uh, I suppose these are all supposed to be hostile, right? So we could probably just chuck some grenades. All right, clear. Clear, everyone clear. Don't lose your cool. Hi. Right. What? That was a headshot. Get wrecked. All right. Uh. There we go. Wait for the flashbang to go off. All right. There we go. Oh, uh, I'm stuck on rubble. Nice okay. You've earned your jump Didn't matter. All right, so that is all the trading missions here. You can see 14 to 14 enemies killed for no losses. Two objectives complete. All right, I'm sick of trading. <laughs> all right. So next time we can start going through the operations, and we'll just go through them one by one. Let's see how many we got. One, two, three. Looks like we got 18 missions, so it'll last us a little while. But I think, like I said, that's going to be all for today because this has been going on for far too long. And uh, I am ready for some bed now. So with that, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time and stay safe out there. And we'll see you then.